Hello and welcome to a special edition of World Inside with Tianwei BRICS 2017. We are broadcasting from the host city of Xiamen. The past decade has witnessed the ups and downs of BRICS members' development. We saw them making achievements. We also saw them facing challenges. This year in Xiamen, leaders of the BRICS countries are reaffirming their desire to work together. They're pushing for a collaborative development. In recent years, BRICS members have each faced problems brought by low growth rate. This year, China has raised the idea of BRIC Plus, inviting more developing economies to join this gathering. So this, many say, is going to be a wonderful stage of the development of the BRICS economies. the biggest ever gathering in BRICS history. Leaders from the world's five largest emerging economies have gathered at this year's BRICS Business Forum in the eastern Chinese city of Xiamen, meeting on the best way to move forward. Xiamen Huiwu, Kaimo. Chinese President Xi Jinping has called for joint efforts to usher in the second dynamic decade of the emerging markets bloc to benefit people of all countries. As the world undergoes profound complex changes, BRICS cooperation has become more important. Our people expect us to jointly boost development and improve their well-being. The international community expects us to make contributions to world peace and common development. We must redouble our efforts to comprehensively deepen the BRICS partnership and golden decades of BRICS cooperation. To make the pie of the global economy bigger, it's what President Xi Jinping's wishes for all emerging markets and developing countries. He seeks positive contributions to global economic growth through building an open world economy, facilitating trade and investment, and making new global value chains. In regard to global governance, oh, President Xi called on the yeah. bloc to meet the responsibility for safeguarding world peace and forging cooperation. We should speak with one voice and jointly present our solution to issues concerning international peace and development. These meet the expectations of the international community and will help safeguard of our common interests. Due to the complex internal and external environment, BRICS countries have experienced ups and downs in the past 10 years. Some say the BRICS economies are fading. But the truth is, that in the previous decade, the five countries' GDPs have made extra contributions to the stabilization and revival of the world economy, and now they are moving forward to usher in the second golden decade of cooperation. You are watching a special program of World Inside with Tianwei here in Xiamen, marking the BRICS Summit being held here in China. And we are focusing on a crucial topic, BRICS, growth, and solutions. To tackle that with us, we are joined by a very strong panel. Lasty Mastor of the New Development Bank from South Africa. Welcome. Jane Sun, very well-known female CEO of a sea travel coming from China. And Atul Dalakoti, the executive director of the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, originally of course, coming from India. Good to have you. Every one of you has an amazing story and a story that you grow with your country and with the economies of this group. Every one of you is an entrepreneur to begin with in your own field. Let's begin with Les. What about your story? New Development Bank. New Development Bank <laughs> uh, started exactly two years uh, ago. Um, it seems like yesterday uh, for me, but two years have uh, flown by. Um, we have a real sense of achievement today because arriving here with no staff, no systems, no processes really to underpin a bank. Mm. Started from single chair and single table. That is exactly right. <laughs> I also feel that in some ways this experience replicates for me another experience I had in 1994 when during the transition to democracy where I went into a new government, 
which had a completely fresh mandate, the first democratically elected government. Where in South you, Africa. Yeah, put in place new laws, new systems, higher staff. It, there's something about that newness that is replicated in the new development bank experience. Yeah, And also because, uh, coming here with the rise of China and the sense of dynamism that is in uh, China, uh, despite the slowdown in Chinese economy over the last few years, that sort of 6.5 percent uh, annual growth rate economy. Yeah, we could feel that energy. That energy, I guess, Jane also has a say here because she's so. running one of the most prominent Chinese travel companies. So, how did that startup happen for you for yeah. this company? Sure. And also, how is that likely link with your partners from sure. other BRICS countries? Uh, we were founded in 1999. Uh, through the hard work of our young employees with an average age of 25 Oh my god, can you imagine that? <laughs> yeah, we have developed a strong network. Mm -hmm. Now we have 300 million registered users served by our young employees. Uh, we are the largest mm -hmm. online travel agency in Asia and second largest online travel agencies globally. In China, about 20% of the people are engaged directly or indirectly with travel. Mm. Therefore, c will create lots of job opportunities for millions of families in China. We, uh, when I joined the company 12 years ago, our market cap was only 500 million. Mm. And now, R &D. Uh, USD. Now, our market cap exceeded 30 billion uh, around the world. Uh, so it's the wait a minute, 30 billion, billion. that's yeah. your saying? Yeah, exactly. Wow. 60 times in uh, 12 years. And it's still growing very strong. This is a very fresh example of how companies in these BRICS countries are actually growing over time. In yeah. China is this case, like Jane explained. But what about Atu in India? Well, for me, my journey started in 1977 when I came to China. <laughs> and it has been a, it's been a dream run. And I, how come I you were in China beginning. so long ago? Well, time flies. And I think it's just the beginning. The best period of our uh, lives are in front of we are all ready for that. I have worked with many Indian companies and I have been with the Chamber for the past 15 years. And what we are seeing is the balance of trade has gone from somewhere in the range of $200 million to seven days. You mean China and India? Yes. So we are also part and parcel of trying to encourage the people to people relationship, business to business relationship. And I think these two great nations, which have a joint population of more than 2.5 billion people, are very important for the real growth of the world. And I feel privileged to be part of that. Yeah, when we talk about BRICS, people are still questioning from outside the emerging market economies, saying, really, are you really a group? Are you still a group? Can you still be a group? Let's see. But there's no question that uh, the five countries have very unique, uh, distinctive differences in terms of size, in terms of culture, institutions, history, uh, and so on. But there's such a much deeper, stronger sense of common aspirations that form the glue of this BRICS uh, formation. And you've seen that over the last nine years, how not just BRICS uh, um, sort of from a business and economic perspective, but in culture, universities, uh, education, uh, law, Absolutely. diplomacy, in every uh, endeavor, there's, there's been um, collaborative uh, efforts. I believe that these will, will eventually also result in more institutional forms. For example, we have a BRICS Business Council, which mm. we are just signing a memorandum of understanding with as a new development bank, where we're going to look at how can we deepen our links in each of the five countries to ensure that we can do and fund more private sector involvement in, uh, in infrastructure. Right. So in short, I believe that BRICS definitely has a uh, future. Uh, the, the differences are not seen as areas of weaknesses. The differences uh, can be amplified uh, in, in, in various ways to become strengths. The thing is that we each have very unique differences. Technological change today is a real equalizer because we don't need the strength we can overnight become a leading player in yeah. any industry. But you know when you yeah. talk about the equalizer, is it real equalizing some would say, Jane, for example, your company, one of those Chinese ones, are also taking over and acquire some of the company, let's just say, in India at this point. So people are saying, are the bigger players getting all the cakes? Are the smaller ones feeling losing out? What would you say, Jane? In the interconnected world, investing or being invested 
by some companies is a way to collaborate That's further. True. So, for example, we are one of our major shareholders is Booking, um, the largest online travel agencies, and Ctrip is the second largest travel agencies. Through that investment, we work very closely as good partners. Customers from both sides enjoy each other, uh, enjoy the both of the inventories yeah. a lot. So instead of uh, having a hostile attitude, we always try to maximize the shared interest. Only then, both sides of the countries, mm. people in these countries will benefit. Well, they say, well, the Chinese talk about the shared interest. Are they really sharing the interest? Can you give us some specific examples, James? Uh, so, for example, Chinese people have strong demand. Uh, they want to travel. They're very curious. Oh They're God, adventurous holiday season and go to the airport. Right. Leslie, you know that. <laughs> right, right. So that demand needs to be fulfilled mm -hmm. by somebody, by some country. And that's the opportunity for those countries that's afraid of change. They will feel very negative. Oh, Chinese are taking over us. But in reality, if you take this opportunity, move along with the trend, welcome these people, mm -hmm. build more hotels, build more railways, build more airlines. That's wonderful opportunity right. to boost the GDP this for these local people. This is how you deal people. with it, right? What kind of attitude, yeah. what approach? Well, first of all, I'll go back on the political part. Thought, I think, is a very important thing. You saw the issues of the border between India and China, and I think BRICS has played a very important part in bringing them together. I think this is also one of the ways of looking at things, that when there is more interaction with people, people it is good for everybody. And now we have five more countries who are going to be present in the BRICS uh, summit in uh, Shaman this year, which will help more people to get together. So the people-to-people -people relationship, what Citrip is doing is also creating the people-to-people -people bridge mm -hmm. of people from India going to the world or the Chinese people who have become right. much more affluent in the past 30 years to be able to travel abroad and become really international in their thinking. Mm -hmm. So traveling is, I think, a very important part of the growth of China. Jane, you has won the heart of Atu already, Absolutely. totally 120 yeah. percent. But, but Atu, what oh, about totally that? Are the bigger parties getting all the interest? Are the smaller parties really losing out? I think the, the, we have to have these pockets of excellence. The Chinese model of development was the opening up of these zones which really created the new China of today. You mean and the I development think, zones, the yes, experiment zones? Yes, totally. And now these companies like Citrip, Alibaba, Indian, TCS, Tara's, and the other companies like Reliance, they are all working to create global businesses which create value for everyone, mm -hmm. all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. That is most important. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, big companies, uh, Tian, uh, are not the greatest of new jobs. In each of our economies, in South Africa, in Brazil, in India, as the tool has just indicated, it's entrepreneurs, uh, in China as well. It's, it's these new businesses that stimulate new, new growth. So um, there's often a critique mm. that the large corporations are the ones that get the bigger parts of the, of the cake. I'm sure other people are inspired by Jane's story, Ron Citro, who want to maybe create new ventures mm. because uh, our economies are so large and developing, as Atula said, the, the, just look at the demographics. India will continue to urbanize, will continue more and more people moving to the middle class. You need to build roads, you need to uh, provide services to, right. to people. So the scope and opportunity that comes from that growth uh, which is where new entrepreneurs can flourish in that environment. So you do think that these entrepreneurs that's likely to really bring a lot of vitality to our economies on the break Absolutely. stage also? Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, in the work that, that, that we do traditionally, mm -hmm. multilateral banks like New Development Bank provided funding mainly to governments and to state-owned enterprises. We will, in 2018, moving forward into the private sector because the private sector today are playing a much bigger role or an increasingly important role in the provision of infrastructure, whether it's broadband, uh, in terms of high-speed yes, internet right. services, whether it's uh, most of the independent power producers in renewable energy, are all private uh, companies, the building of toll roads, rail, and so on. So there's new opportunity for private uh, companies to play a role in infrastructure. We want to finance and facilitate that. But I'm watching. Tell me if I could add here that the big companies are creating the real human resource 
which is going out right. and creating these new companies. Right. So we should not look down right. upon the bigger companies. Oh, <laughs> they are creating this He's human resource. Members, you know, big, uh, giant companies. Oh. So, you know, these people are the people who have, uh, you know, set up Citrip and Alibaba and yeah. all these people. So we need to give them a uh, opportunity to get new skills, That's right. look at an international level and do things differently. Mm -hmm. And I think for people in China who are in startups, people in India who are in startups, people in South Africa who are in startups, we require a global market. And for that, we need to work together. Beautifully said. And you are watching Breaks, Growth and Solutions, a special program of World Inside with Tianwei featuring the BRICS Summit in Xiamen. We'll be back after this. Welcome back. You're watching World Inside with Tianwei, our special program here in Xiamen, marking the bricks in this city. I'm joined here in our special studio on the site by Leslie Mastor, Jane Sun, and Atu Dalakodi. Earlier you told your own personal stories, your understanding of the so-called growth and the potential. But what about the realities? A lot of people are asking among the BRICS economies, are you really cooperating at all? What would you say? I personally believe that economies which are similar trade the most. So from the trading perspective, if you see, there's a lot of trade between South Africa and China. There's a lot of trade between India and China. Mm. There's a lot of trade with Brazil and China. So trading is growing. So that's not a problem. I think even if you see US and Europe, they trade the most. They are very similar economies. So that, I don't, I'm not afraid of competition. This is a cooperative effort. The question is what kind of competition? The cooperation has to be, because I'll keep away from competition, but look at cooperation. And the cooperation has to be in the area of new businesses, in the areas of energy, and especially in green energy. I think that's the next frontier. India has met its goals and has set very aggressive goals for new energy. We are trying to uh, put up 100 smart cities. Mm. There's a great opportunity for Chinese companies and other BRIC, BRICS nations to come and be part of this growth. So I think the future is going to be amazing for people who are ready to cooperate. If I and BRICS is a good platform. Right, you're saying, you know, cooperation and the competition, whichever innovation is the key for all of us to grow do you agree with that absolutely right. and i think that there is a space somewhere and people joke and say there should be a new word called cooperation <laughs> between cooperation and yeah. uh, competition because it is not a zero-sum game it does not mean that because china has world-class companies in e-commerce that uh south africa in its endeavor to establish those companies have to now try and block china out uh, as a tool as, as, as articulated, we can actually benefit from each other. I'll give you an example, we have a world-class financial services and banking system in South Africa. The banks are rated in the top five in the world, our governance, our stock exchanges, uh, again, are ranked in the top three in, in the world. Um, each of the countries have unique world-class capabilities, and if we can leverage off each other, learn from each other, form unique partnerships, we can build that competition, you know, that space. But we have a lot of desire to form partnerships. The question is, is it the desire more top-down or actually bottom-up? Uh, there's only so much that can happen from a top-down uh, perspective. We all agree that, right? Governments, governments play a very important role to create an enabling environment, loosen the rules, create the right policy, regulatory and legislative frameworks for entrepreneurs uh, to um, uh, take up those opportunities. I don't think BRICS mechanisms can choreograph all of these uh, partnerships. They will come from people with vision, with imagination, with creativity, who you know have an idea, and who will, after this program, phone a tool and say, I've got an idea. That, uh, between South Africa and uh, a company. Get your mobile phone ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I personally feel that it's very important that the growth comes from the new companies, the new economy. 
because if you see the market cap of Citrip today, you couldn't in the old economy days think a company could achieve that. But today it's a new world. So let's try to work together on these areas. Let the new people, let the young people get into it. So the people to people relationship which I always talk about is I think the bedrock which we need to do anything and everything possible yeah. to get people to meet each other to be with each other, to understand each other. You know, mm -hmm. And traveling is one of the best ways. Absolutely. It is one of the best ways. But Atul, you know, one of the things is that what people read about our countries, they just say in the media, are actually quite far away from what you have just told them. So people from outside our world would be very confused, say, which is the real picture? Mm. Are, are you guys, yeah. you know, on the border, the conflicts of the picture, or actually, sitting together, talking about cooperation, talking about taking off the economy, particularly the innovation, which is the bigger picture and the real picture? I'll let you respond to that too. Uh, Atul first, uh, very briefly. Because I think the fact that you are mentioning it makes it much more important for us to get together. There are people who think differently and the number of people who think differently is sizable. Let's not try to... Uh, Put it, brush it off. Uh, yeah, brush it off, uh, you know, and say it doesn't exist. It does. And that's why for globalization, for real globalization, which is a win-win globalization for everybody, we have to work together. We have to get this message across to the people that this is the only way to move forward in this. There are a lot of things, Jane. Yeah. He said, she said kind of thing that we've heard right. from people. But you know, one of the things to do is to really go there to see, see it, it. Yeah. to see it, and absolutely. Really to meet people. Yeah. So we have the privilege to send people, 15 million people abroad, which create directly and indirectly 30 million job opportunities around the world. Through these travel, people have people to people inter uh, Interact. interactions. Uh, so they get to know each other very well. So when I went to Middle East, if I do that, I thought it was full of bombs, a chaotic situation. But when I was there, people are lovely people. They share the same common value as people here in BRICS countries. They love their family, love their life, yeah. love the job opportunities. We are all the same. A we are all human stereotypes. beings. Through travel, I think people were able to see each other right. face to face. It's the best people to people diplomat. Yeah. Same method. with with Africa. Same. Mm -hmm. People think about Africa. It's all. It's almost one country. It's not. It's a rising continent. South mm -hmm. Africa, for example. So Africa is the only country um, in Africa as part of uh, BRICS, but we very much aspirationally see ourselves as you know, carrying the collective aspirations of almost a billion uh, people. Right? Um, we hope that over time, as the BRICS expand in the years to come, because make no mistake, we are living through an era now of a, a rise in the importance of emerging uh, markets, but not at the exclusion of all the others that are outside of the BRICS. It's only five uh, countries for now. Which, uh, let's take uh, Africa. Africa today uh, you know, is about a $2 trillion uh, economy, 53 uh, uh, countries, very diverse, but it is a rising continent. It's a rising continent in every uh, uh, respect. Uh, it's got the largest number of young uh, people in terms of uh, youth, and these people are able to embrace technology faster. Uh, Kenya, for, for example, Kenya is a very developed economy on the, on the eastern uh, part of uh, the continent, but they developed uh, world-class technologies that has now been adopted elsewhere mm -hmm. in the world. We don't want to say there's no challenge. There are a lot of challenges. We need to talk about realities too. Uh, we were not just focusing on the rosy picture, but rather telling people what the real picture is. Now, what about these challenges, Leslie? Very briefly, I would say firstly... Sorry, I've become each, you first on the challenges. <laughs> in each of our uh, five uh, countries, we did four countries, except for India. India has been recording record levels of uh, growth uh, today. But all of our economies have very unique challenges on the economic growth perspective because... If you ask the Indians, they have their own challenges too. We'll let Atul totally. talk about that. Sure, Go ahead, Leslie. But I think the important point here, and you've already touched on the word balance, we need to find a way to have balance and I would add the word sustainable growth. This became a big theme in Hangzhou at the G20 last year. G20 economies are focused on getting balanced growth. Why is balance and sustainable important? We want to have a growth trajectory that makes our economies less amenable to this boom-bust sort of uh, 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 phenomenon. So in other words, we want to make sure that we 
undertake all of the structural reforms in the economy to have a fun set of foundations yeah. for longer term uh, growth. You can have commodity prices going up and South Africa and Brazil, two very strong commodity based economies, can flourish. And then when commodity prices go down, you go through a, a period of a decline again. So we've got to find a way to develop those industries. It's the tourism. South Africa is a beautiful country. So amongst our five countries, there are so many innovative, imaginative things we can do to begin to stimulate. But the answer does not lie in short-term initiatives, unfortunately. It's all about lifting the productive base of the economy, uh, directing our investment towards new sectors, investing in infrastructure, leveraging of technology and so on. There are unfortunately no short-term quick fixes on this growth question that you posed. That's very true. And quick fixes usually don't work well. We all know that through the decades of development. Now, too, what about you? Well, first of all, I thank my colleague to have said that India is growing well. I think we have a great demographic advantage. We have 75% of our people under the age of 35. Yeah. So we are going to see for the next 20 years an amazing amount of development happening yeah. in India. But you know, just one but quick question. Me, yeah. What if there are AI? What if there are more robots? You know, it's going to take the place of the very strong labor force that you have. Will that be still an advantage or quote unquote disadvantage? Yeah, because you see, when we were kids, and I'm still a kid now, but still, <laughs> I've you know, grown in age. Uh -huh. And in these years, technology has moved very quickly. But the world is a better place. 100% about that. So that's not an issue here. The issue is, is it going to be inclusive growth? Yeah. Is it green growth? Mm -hmm. Is it sustainable? I think India has a, a you know infrastructure deficit, huge deficit. We, according to me, need at least two to three trillion dollars invested in the next 20 years in infrastructure in India to try to bring it to the stage of where China is today. So this is a great opportunity for all the countries. Mm -hmm. The BRICS countries together today have a GDP of 17 plus trillion dollars. That's right. And they have a great human resource which is present in these countries, which has to work on opportunities. Pitching for growth yeah. is the most important. Pitching for growth, and you have to have common consensus as to how to achieve those growth mm -hmm. as well. So Jane, what exactly is going to help us to guarantee at least to a certain extent yeah. growth? Right? Yeah, I think I'm very excited about the challenge. Challenge represents opportunity. Whichever company, whichever country can overcome these challenges will excel. Uh, so every time I saw a customer complain, something that we're not doing well, I'm excited about it because once it's solved, it's a new That's opportunity. Point. Yeah, so uh, every time we have a challenge, the country with open mindedness will win. Uh, China, great country, India, and all of the countries uh, within this group has the spirit to encourage the grassroots entrepreneurship. So I'm very positive that BRICS country will take the leadership through these challenges. Uh, in my mind, technology investment will enable us to overcome these challenges. It will create the scalability in the global places. Mm, it's amazing, ladies and gentlemen, that we are sitting here. Imagine, I mean, more than 10 years ago, nobody would think about such an opportunity that these emerging economies are sitting together. And individual representatives like you are here with all of us. I think you, coming from the 60s and the 70s generation, by the way, I don't want to reveal your age, <laughs> but anyway, we're all young at heart, and yet it's amazing what we have experienced. Absolutely, absolutely. It's making history, simply put. How is it to function as an individual in this process of making history? I really want to get something, a personal inside of that from every one of you. I think it's just the beginning. What it really means to me personally is to be a better human being. And I'm saying it in the real value of living with a lesser carbon imprint, being able to mentor more people and work with them in cross uh, you know, cultures, I think that is most important. So I always come back to the people to people friendship that we are creating, that we need to create further. And this new religion of friendship right. is going to help <laughs> us move forward. China has done an amazing job of taking 
more than 400 million people out of poverty. We need to do that in India. And we have to work together and to work in a more sustainable, in a more harmonious way and get the de desired results. Atul is using one phrase, the religion of friendship. <laughs> but Jane, what about to you? I think Making history yes, on a personal basis. Absolutely. I think our generation is extremely blessed. Uh, my grandparents' generation, they were uh, suffered during the Second World War. So our generation carries the dream for three generations to go abroad. I feel excited. I think we finally have the opportunity to carry on their dreams to go abroad. And I'm very positive for the future generation. Mm -hmm. It's our ambition to grow them and go to the better future. Not just the going abroad, but also be a major player mm -hmm. among all of us to be on the international stage. Absolutely. Leslie. I agree wholeheartedly with what uh, Atul and uh, China said. We're living through such ex exciting uh, times. We are blessed to see uh, this, uh, all of these historic uh, changes, the rise of our own countries, the rise of emerging markets, the possibilities of technology. However, Tian, it's very important that we recognize large numbers of people are still left behind. Inequality has increased. So globalization has produced all of these uh, benefits and prosperity and lifting nations. As they say, a, a rising tide lifts all the ships. However, large numbers of people remain without access to economic uh, opportunities, remain without uh, um, uh, uh, quality education, uh, health care services, uh, uh, healthy drinking water, and so on. So much more needs to be done so that this globalization touches everyone's yeah. lives in the BRICS countries. We want to be cool-headed. At the same time, I see the lights really shining in your eyes. Thank you so much for sharing with us. You're watching BRICS Growth and Solutions, a special edition of World Inside with Tianwei from this year's BRICS Summit in Xiamen. We'll be back after this. are watching World Inside with Tianwei, our special program coming to you from Xiamen, the site of the BRICS Summit this year. And we are bringing to you our special program, Growth and Solutions. The BRICS economies are facing challenges. What are the solutions out? One of them is to have cooperation, not only among governments, but also and especially between the business communities. But how to do it? And what is the way for the future? Let's meet Shu Yinbiao, who is the chairman of the state-grade corporation in China. His company is one of the largest on the list of the Fortune Global 500. Chairman Shu, what a pleasure to have you. Yes, the same pleasure. <laughs> I understand recently there are a lot of news going on with the state-grade. You have just finished buying the remaining share of CPFL, which is the second largest transmitter of electricity in Brazil. And this is adding to a whole list of things you are doing with Brazil. Why are you so fascinated, sir, by the country of Brazil? Yes, indeed. Uh, Brazil is a fascinating country for, st for state grid to invest. Up to now, we have invested over 7 billion US dollars in the transmission and the distribution. Uh -huh. We are the biggest distribution company and the second largest the transmission companies. Brazil, as an emerging economy, yeah. still have many bottlenecks when it comes to energy. How much can you really be of support to them? Yes, you are right. One of the bottlenecks for the Brazilian power industry is uh, uh, the long distance transmission. I see. For example, in, um, in Amazon River, there are a uh, huge potential for the hydropower. Yes. As a national strategy, they want to explore the hydropower and then transmit the power to the south part of the Brazil, which is uh, about, which is more than 2,500 kilometers long. I see. State grid has developed the technology. That's your technology? It is my technology. It's uh, our own technology. This technology allows us 
allows them to transmit the power from where it's gen uh, generated to the source part to the real regions. So the real the people in Rio can enjoy the clean energy far from uh, far from uh, the Amazon River. The Amazon River. So far actually, from. you are putting the the energy generated in the Amazon River all the way yes. to let's just say the ghettos in Rio, the yeah. poor people there, they can now enjoy electricity as a result of this long distance transmission. The prices could be down. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, the the UHV transmission technology is more efficient and reliable. That means the cost for the transmission is quite low. Mm -hmm. It's very competitive uh, uh, to the uh, power price uh, with uh, local generation. Not just Brazil, actually. You have been this great investing in many and developing countries. You know, the Philippines yeah. and Greece and Italy, which now are suffering from economic problems. But many would say, you know, why, Chairman Xu, are you looking for these countries that are actually right now facing challenges? Why don't you go out there and invest in those countries who are enjoying themselves, having a great time? Why do you focus on these countries that are having problems? Yes, uh, actually we have invested in uh, seven countries and the regions by operating the energy networks. Mm -hmm. Now we are looking for more opportunities in the developing countries and the emerging economies with our uh, uh, high technologies, such as just mentioned before, the earlier, the uh, UHV uh, transmission technology, smart grid, large-scale renewable uh, integration mm -hmm. and a large system uh, safety operation and extra mm. we can uh, use we can make the use of the, those technologies to serve the, uh, those countries no wonder when the Brazilian president when he was making his uh, state visit mm -hmm. to Beijing just a few days ago I guess huh? uh, he yes. was meeting with the Chinese president and he was also meeting with very few business leaders from China and you are one of them what did you say behind the closed doors? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, uh, I met the Brazilian president on last Friday. Uh, during the conversation, I was trying to explain about my company, uh, but uh, he told me uh, that he knew a lot about the steel grid because during his flight to China, he discussed a lot uh, about uh, the steel grid with his ministers. Also, he expressed his appre much, appre much appreciation for steel grid to invest during the hard time of the Brazil. Uh, of the Brazil. Uh, I just told him, uh, it's just a spirit of the belt and the road. It's a mutual benefit. Mm -hmm. When our friends encountered the difficulties, we have to give the hand to them. But we have to make sure it is not about the bigger ones, such as the state grid, mm -hmm. taking over the smaller ones in the other developing and emerging because some say that is not a win-win situation. We don't do the 100% share. We, uh, we need to cooperate with, uh, we, we need to co cooperate with uh, local partners. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it is what we are doing. What is one of the most important principles of your cooperation? Uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the long-term strategic partner and the localization, uh, and the localization and the employment of the local the talents. Actually, in Brazil, you did exactly that, didn't you? Two percent only are Chinese working in the companies that you have acquired. But actually, 98% yes. are those Brazilians that are working in those companies. And you have created an enormous amount of jobs yes. in those companies. Tell us more about that. We are employing 14,000 local employees. And uh, with a net, with a, a annual tax payment over 300 million US dollars. Also, we take uh, uh, responsibilities. Uh, dedication to the local social and uh, economic development. For example, we, uh, we founded a orchestra, orchestra. orchestra uh, for the uh, 
slum children. They performed very well. During the uh, during Chinese President Xi Jinping visited uh, Brazil, the the orchestra played a beautiful Chinese song. What is the it? Chinese music. It's a uh, hope of uh, hope in the field. Oh, okay. It's hope of in the field. 在希望的田野上。Yes, it is. <laughs> Are the Brazilian kids really enjoying it? Yes, yes, I think so. <laughs> At the Winter Davos World Economic Forum, in which the Chinese President Xi Jinping gave an absolutely impressive speech yes. and talk about globalization, yes. at the Summer Davos, in which you are talking about innovation in Chinese businesses, at the Belt and Road Initiative Conference, in which you and other business leaders are trying to come up with some specific proposals to work together with the countries and the businesses along the Belt and Road Initiative, but you yourself. Chairman Shu, if I could say to our audience, it's a very low-key person. <laughs> Actually, I struggle so much in order to get you over here to talk. <laughs> um, I just wonder how, on the one hand, the Chinese companies need to be visible and tell people what we are here to do. On the other hand, there are still misunderstanding about Chinese businesses in some places in the、yes. world. How do you see that? Keep that balance in a way. Yes, twenty、uh, seventeen is quite busy year for Stigree. <laughs> to say the least, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I personally attended many international、uh, forum from Davos, from Winter Davos,、uh, and the Summer Davos, and the One Belt One Road、uh, Summit. By attending so many international forum, we learn a lot.、Mm -hmm. I think it's very important for. France, as the largest utility in the world, keep on learning from our from our other counterparts, which、uh, is great beneficial for the grid. I think、uh, sharing experiences, learning from others, is help us a lot. But you are so modest, I guess, because you are already on the very top list. Of the Fortune 500 in the world, you are also becoming such a big player, incorporating the others、yeah. to join in order to come up with new initiatives. Yes, also I would like to、uh, more than pleased to share our own advanced technologies and、uh, management experiences to others. We、so、can grow together to serve to get、uh, to serve the people of the world. What a pleasure to have you! All the best and enjoy your Xiamen bricks. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that is all the time we have for today. If you like to see more of our program, try to find us World Inside CGTN on your search engine. You can also follow us on our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and see the Weibo. On behalf of my team here in Xiamen at the 2017 BRICS Summit, and many of those back in Beijing, thank you for being with us and tune in next time for more insights in around the world. Have a great day.